Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Yes, Shifters, my name is Vlad IT with Shifter Magazine, and I am here with uh, Jared McGriff, uh, for, uh, who's actually, uh, he's a director, an editor, uh, and, and a filmmaker, um, based, uh, who's actually, you're from, New, you're from New Jersey, I believe, right? Correct. Yep. Yes. Correct. 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 So, um, yes, I'm really excited to talk to you because uh, you're someone who has a lot of things going on. Um, you, you, you sort of like dive into. You're very creative. You dive into so many different things, and I can't wait to pick your brain a little bit and dive into all these things that you got going on. Uh, for starters, so. Um, so for the, for the people who don't know you, again, like I said, you're a filmmaker, um, you are uh, producing, and I believe you're directing your own uh, seri uh, series right now with Fighting BT, uh, that's going for its third season. Um, it's, it's, I'm really excited for you. Um, first of all, how did you discover your passion for, for this line of work as a director, as a filmmaker? And uh, you know, how did you discover all that? How did that whole happen to you? Gotcha. Yeah, I'll happily jump into it. Um, I will say off the rip, well, one, thank you for having me. This is, uh, you know, I, I appreciate you making the time for us to sit down and talk. Um, on Finding, I will say that I, I'm actually not a director. There's actually no technical, technically no real director on Finding, um, interestingly okay. enough. it's. Um, but I am uh, one of the editors and I've DP'd a, a few uh, episodes of it. And um, I've definitely been with it from the start. So um, it's definitely something that's kind of like a, a project child to me. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of getting started in video, um, I was lucky enough where I found my passion at a real young age. I got started in video production back when I was in high school. Um, I ended up going to Full Sail University and got my bachelor's of science uh, from there. And uh, that was down in Florida. I ended up moving back up north and, um, you know, really starting to grind in kind of like that freelance circuit, which was cool. It taught me, you know, just different different positions, different roles taught me really like production and giving me experience on production. Um, even just coming straight out of high school, uh, I ended up uh, starting to work with uh, Nick Cannon's company, Incredible. And eventually a few years after that, I uh, found my way to BET. And I've been with BET and Viacom since 2016. That's what's up. That's what's up. Well, that's that. That's really exciting, especially you being able to discover this at such a young age, and uh, you know, uh, seeing how far along you've come. So one of the things that I wanted, like again, you you brought it up. I wanted to talk about um, this uh, this concept, finding BET. So so I was diving into it a little bit. I saw that you guys uh, managed to get a hold of Chingy out of all people. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm just I'm just amazed. Like how did that? I, like what sparked that idea and um, you know what how, how was it conceptualized so th that's really the brainchild of um, one of our uh, writers at the time at, with BET Digital her name is uh, Ayana and she came up with this really amazing idea of like yo there's so many artists that we used to listen to back in the day like where where are they like literally just like a where are they now I think she was yep. like listening to some some music and was just like yo like where is Nivea like like what is Nivea doing? And at that point in, uh, in 2019, like what, what, what is it? What's her life like? Um, and so she brought it to uh, one of the producers on the team whose name is Ashley Graham. She's also an, uh, another amazing producer. And they started kind of coming up with the story and really fleshing it out. Uh, once they realized that, yo, there's a concept here. They, um, they brought me into it. Like, cool. This is the idea that we have. How do you think it should look? What do you what do you think about it? How do you what are the visual elements? How should it feel? Um, and so we ideated and, and brainstormed on that. And next thing you know, we went into production and Nivea was our, our first episode. And she has a, a a very, very interesting story, which is cool, because even like I said, that episode was probably like three years ago. But since then, she's been on multiple shows. She got like a Breakfast Club interview right afterwards. Like her story is it's um, from us telling it the first time has been able to be retold multiple times afterwards. So yeah, that's really where it originated from. Just like wondering like, where where are these people? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, and uh, it's interesting because I mean, as a as a as a director, as a video producer yourself, uh, mm -hmm. you definitely have to. You, you I, I'm I'm assuming that you have a passion for telling stories, uh, whether it's uh, stories that you're writing or actually people's stories. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, you also directed a short film, uh, I believe, called The Now. Yeah, um, yeah, um, and uh, it was actually, um, if I recall correctly, um, that it was. Um, you actually, you were actually able to screen it at the Moet Film Festival. And right. first of all, 
what can you tell us about about the development of that of this specific short film that you that you created and um you know presenting it as as a, at a festival and sharing and sharing that 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 art that you created with like uh with, with an audience something that came deeply like directly from you man that was that was such an amazing experience um and to be honest it was it was yeah it, it shifted me a lot um, the now was a super interesting project because Moet put out, said they were having this film festival, kind of like a call to a bunch of filmmakers. And I honestly wasn't going to do it. Somebody else recommended like, Hey, I really think you should, you know, try to come up with something for this. Um, I think it'd be a good idea. And I wrote something, I sketched it out and I was like, ah, I don't know if I'm really going to do it. And, um, I got a lot of, to be honest, discouragement from it in terms of like, I wrote the idea. I uh, hit a few of my friends up um, and was like, hey, can you guys come out, meet me in the city, do the shoot? And they were all like really open to it. But then some of the people that I was looking up to at the time were like, hey, I don't think it's a good idea. Like, maybe you shouldn't do it. And it wasn't up until honestly, like a, I want to say an hour or two before the, the call time that I had to make the decision whether or not I was going to do it. And I was like, you know what, we're just going to do it. Anything that makes you a little bit scared, anything that makes you a little bit weary, I now take that as a good time, as a good sign, something to jump in on. Um, Cause if you're not nervous about it, then it's, there's no risk. So uh, we shot it. We shot it all literally within a couple of hours uh, with no budget, literally zero, zero budget. Um, and uh, turned around and edit in like a, a couple of days. Um, and it, yeah, submitted to the festival and we won second place in the Moet Film Festival that year. Um, it screened um, at their festival dinner, which was a partnership with Tribeca. So that was really cool as well. Um, and it, it was one of the first times that I've had my work screened in front of people like and not just people, but it was like celebrities. It was other directors. It was the other filmmakers, actors. And um, it's like you have people coming up to you after it's like, yo, we really enjoyed your work. And I'm like, this, this thing I almost didn't do that I almost canceled everything on. Uh, so that was a real um, pivotal part in my journey as a filmmaker. Just really, um, I now think back to that anytime that there's a moment where I'm like, I'm nervous about something, I'm scared about something, maybe I shouldn't do it. Anytime I have those doubts, I go back to that and just remember what good can come out of something if you really take the risk. For sure. And um, in regards to, one thing that I really like to talk about with filmmakers, I think it's because, um, uh, you know, I'm a film critic myself and um, I, I, I think filmmakers are very different type of artists because we, we, we tend to look at uh, the great the, the great pictures uh, of life you know what I mean like in yeah. regard to uh, there's the story there's, there's there are stories involved there's music involved there's images there's sounds and all that kind of stuff um, what's your creative process like like how do you get everything how do you manage to get all these I like you no know, whether it's like an, an idea and uh, or, or you know like a, a creative idea how do you manage to translate it into like on, on paper how, how, how does that work for you Oh, um, to be honest, it changes. It mm -hmm. changes depending on, um, you know, on the, on the project, on the creative, on what it is that I'm feeling. Uh, a lot of times it starts off, I'm, I'm so visually driven. A lot of times it starts off with me seeing something and I'll, I'll see something, I'll, I'll, I'll envision something, whether it's a scene, whether it's a shot, whether it's a setup. And then I kind of work my way back from there. Uh, there was another short film that I, I made called uh, The Bag. And the whole concept of The Bag was like, what if somebody that looks stereotypically guilty, a black guy in a hoodie with a bag, um, is going somewhere, gets stopped by police, and they're, they're, they're doing absolutely nothing wrong. And then what does the police officer do from that moment? Do we, does the police officer do what we expect them to do in that that moment and like just do all the wrong actions or do they actually use that and, and be a better person like certain things like that and so that whole story was crafted from that one scene and then we walked it all the way back to what that that kid's day looked like um so yeah it, it really starts off with a scene or a visual for me most of the time and then I'll, I'll write or ideate or bring some of my friends or other creatives on and we'll flesh it out from there fantastic in regards to um 
typical question here um, you, you, in regards to some of the people that you look up to or that you're inspired by um, who do you have in mind when uh, when it comes to like you know, an icon or someone that you'd like to work with ideally or maybe that you have worked with I'd love to know uh, um, I've definitely worked with some some really cool people uh, not even all of them are just like big names per se but just people that I I look up to just even as friends, as collaborators. Nice. Um, but in terms of uh, bigger names, um, my 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 list isn't super duper crazy. Like I would love to work with Jesse Collins. Um, uh, I would love to work with Will Packer. I look I look at Jesse Collins as a creative, especially with things like award shows. Like he does the BET Awards every year. He just did the Grammys. He just did the Super Bowl halftime show this past year. Um, so as a creative, visually. Um, I aspire to be able to produce an event or anything, a performance or anything to that level. Um, as an executive producer, I look at Will Packer and look at his consistency in films, look at the type of films he's been able to create, um, look at what he's built going from like stomp the yard to the things that he's working on now. And um, I aspire to, to be like that. Uh, so those are the, the two people that I kind of look towards the most. Of course, there's other film directors um, growing up, I was a big F. Gary Gray fan because he was the first mm -hmm. black director that was making films that weren't even necessarily black stories. You know, mm -hmm. it was just like, granted, he has, you know, uh, Friday, but like other stories that just like, like, oh, this is just a dope film. You know what I mean? And oh, snap, there was a black director that did this. Like that was um, that that was huge to me. So, uh, yeah, those are some of the folks I look up to. Um, another um, interesting question that I want to ask you, um, it, it's in regards to your role um, in, in your role in video production, because you're not just a director. Um, you actually, uh, you, you know, people, especially in this new age of like, you know, media and everything, people know what a producer does. People know what a director does. Um, but uh, you're someone who has who, who sort of dives into uh, different roles and who has like a little bit of you have your hands in different in, in different thoughts when it comes to uh the process of not just filmmaking but video production as a whole um okay. what can you describe me in regards to what's your what's your day-to-day -day like mm -hmm. as uh as a creative as a creative like in 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 and how is it how, how where do you stand in regards to uh the people that you work with you know, or you, you you know yeah yeah, um, my day to day is interesting. Uh, the mm -hmm. way that I like to phrase it is like I have two full time jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, on one side, I work with Viacom. Um, I uh, initially was a, a senior editor for BET, and I'm actually in the process now of transitioning to being a technical manager for Viacom, uh, Viacom uh, multi platform production group, uh, which is like their one of their digital arms that crosses across all the Viacom brands, so MTV, VH1 all of that. Um, so on that side of things, that's a lot of uh, technical directing and like uh, managing remote shoots and, you know, in this entire, you know, post COVID and pandemic type of world, you know, we can't send crews out as much as we used to. So how do we still get content from celebrities or from whoever we need to without a crew? And so like sending out remote kits and cameras and walking celebrities or talent through like how to set up a ring light and how to set up a camera and then how to like, like I'm controlling all of that on the other side, like miles away. So uh, that's what my Viacom position looks like um, among other things. Um, and then on the other side of things, I have my production company, L2C Studios, where we work on a lot of branded content. We do, um, we're in a project now with stars for BMF um, coming out and we're, mm -hmm. Uh, working with um, TV One a lot, uh, Fox for our kind of people and certain projects like that. We do, uh, Branded content has kind of really been our, our niche over the last few months. Uh, but that's that's a full-time job. Like at any moment we're running, you know, multiple productions. So it's uh, the day-to-day -day shifts. There's a, there's a lot that can be going on, uh, a lot that moves around, but, uh, but I love it. That's great. That's great. Um, in regards to aspirations and mm -hmm. where you want to take your career, and um, things that you want to work on. Is there anything that you can let us know? Give us a little sneak peek as to what's what. What are the next? What's the next level like for for Jared? Yeah. Um, oh man, it's. Uh, I'll say this: one, God is good, and mm -hmm. so because God is good, um, that that level of the things that I aspire to is always changing because I'm I'm blessed to work on the things that I was aspiring on three or four years ago. So uh, 
the thing, what, what I'd like to accomplish next is um, doing, working on some longer features, some longer original projects, um, being able to work more with some of the creatives that are in my circles um, and provide opportunities for them to even work in roles that maybe they're not getting provided from, you know, on, on more conventional shoots or other companies. Um, I'd, I'd love to do more stuff in live production. Uh, we've started started doing that a lot in the pandemic, um, and I'd love to see that side of the company grow. But uh, overall, I just want to just be a better creative. Like I'm, I'm, I'm literally kind of open to everything. I'm along for the whatever ride that uh, you know opportunities God puts in front of me. And um, yeah, I'm I'm just excited about whatever comes next. Fantastic. Do you have anything on your radar right now that um, that you you're finding specifically like inspiring, or something that you'd like to co-sign in regards to something that other creators are done, or something that's happening in the in the film industry, especially by Black folks uh, that you really want to applaud? Oh man, um, there's a there's over the last few years, especially with everything that went on in 2000, uh, 2020. Um, yeah, there's, uh, yeah. I think 2020, what it did is it, it opened up the door to realize that to, I don't even want to say realize, but to put pressure on how important black narratives are. Right. Um, I think that you've seen a shift in the industry since last year, and it started before that, but especially since last year to kind of move some of those stories that may have been put to the side, um, more to the front line. And so I'm super excited to see black people in all different uh, walks of life in all different all different ways not just you know the powers but you can have the powers you can also have the sweet lives you can also have you know blind spotting you can also like all these shows that range in different um experiences while still having black and minority faces i'm i'm extremely excited about that um yeah 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 i think yeah i'll put a pin in it there yeah. <laughs> and uh one more question here uh in regards to because you, you you brought up the fact that there's there, there hasn't been a shift in um you know the the representation especially in regards to what i call uh modern black cinema um mm -hmm. this evolution in regards to the circle specifically um even you know in regards to the kind of stories that are being told uh you know characters that are allowed to be flawed and that are not stereotypical but at the same time they're they feel really authentic to the culture that we're a part of um mm -hmm. what are some of the ways in which uh you're seeing this um, specifically, what are some of the specific ways in which you're seeing progress? And what are some of the, of the areas in which you think uh, we should, there's still a lot of work to, to, there's still a lot of things to work on? Yeah, I think that um, one, one of the ways that, or one of the areas where I see a lot of pro, uh, progress is just in the, the risk that's being taken on stories that weren't taken before. Um, when you look at um, the majority, right, in terms of like, stories that are that that are led by white actors with white directors and things of that nature like you can literally find a story on just about anything um it doesn't have to be the most mainstream it doesn't have to be the most popular you're mm -hmm. allowed to go indie and still get a five million dollar budget um yeah. because it's like it's going to talk to somebody uh you've well, like i said over the last couple of years you've there's been a, a shift where there's more risk on where even if it's not your generic you know, African-American story, um, there's still, you're, we're able to dive into niches now and still have the budgets to back those up. Uh, the area that I'd like to see improve more is having more uh, black and minority faces behind the scenes, behind the camera, uh, in the writer's rooms um, and all the way down mm -hmm. throughout the crew. You know what I mean? Not even just mm -hmm. above the line, but below the line, camera operators, uh, down to the, to the PAs, you know, um, really mm -hmm. setting people up to be able to, work in the gifts that they have um, and build their career up, not just having to like start at the very bottom and then grind, 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 grind just for somebody to give them a shot. Like they're, I, I, I want to see more of our stories being told by people that look like us and then being produced also and crewed up with people that look like us as well. Fantastic. Two more questions for you here. Um, yeah. Another one, um, if you could talk to the younger version of yourself who's just getting started on this journey. Uh, what is an, what, what's, what's an advice that, what are some advices that you'd like to tell yourself or something that you'd like to tell yourself? Mm. Um, that's, all, that's a question that always kind of gets me. Uh, <laughs> it, it forces you to reflect a bit. <laughs> it does, it does, but I love it, I love it. Um, if I could tell my younger self anything, 
I think it would be trust your gut um, and don't feel like you need to take everything so serious, you know? Um, growing, growing up, especially when I was younger, it was like, I, I, once I knew what I wanted to do, I felt like I, I had a responsibility. Like, okay, a lot of people don't know what they wanna do this young in life. I do, now I need to chase it full force. And that's led me to a lot of, you know, um, opportunities and it, in a way kind of gave me a head start, which I'm super grateful for. Uh, but um, I put a lot of additional stress on me. That's unnecessary. And now mm -hmm. growing, being, being older and um, realizing like how important mental health is as well. Yeah. I think it's uh, something that I wish back in the day when I was just getting into it, like, hey, you don't have to, you don't have to put the heat on high just yet. Like you will get there, um, trust yourself, trust your instincts. Uh, but it's, it's, it's a, you know, it's not a, it's not a race, you know, just, yeah. just coast it through. That's what's up. And um, what would you want to tell um, the new, what would you, is that, does that align with what you would tell somebody who's getting started on this journey? Uh, the person, someone who's, who's, who's brand new into this, um, again, you said it's not a race, but brand new into this journey, into this path. Um, mm -hmm. Is that the advice that you would give them as well? Definitely. I think the other thing I would add on to that is um, failure is okay. Like, yes, failure is absolutely okay. And I know that's a little generic, yeah. but it's absolutely okay to fail. Yeah. Um, I know some people, <laughs> I know some people who have failed in multiple areas and still are running video production companies that are, that are like, that are getting jobs. And it's because they, they lack the fear, you know what I mean? And they, to be honest, it's almost lacking the pride of like, cool, you're never going to see me fail. You're never going to this, that, and the other. Like, cool. Yeah. I may fail, but I'm going to get up and I'm going to do it again. And I'm going to do it again. And I'm going to do it again. Um, you need to put in your, what is it, like 20,000 hours that they yeah. said before you're like proficient at something you need to put in your hours. And in those hours, you can't think that you're not going to fail within any of them. So be okay with failing. Yeah. Uh, actually, um, my bad, I actually had one more question for you. <laughs> Go ahead. I got, I got a little bit of time. <laughs> Fantastic. So, um, so, so actually let's, let's, let's dive more into this then. Um, mm -hmm. Ideally, if you could make a movie about a specific thing, um, you know, what would be the ideal team that you would like to take on? Mm, um, I've <laughs> this is something as a filmmaker think about all the time. Literally, like, what's what's the story? Uh, for me, um, I'd like to see more stories that kind of reflect my upbringing, in terms of like I, I wasn't. Um, my my parents worked really hard to get where they were. They provided some opportunities for me, um, just in terms of like growing up. Not so much in terms of my career because they. Neither of them were in entertainment. So they were like, you're on your own there. But um, like just a black kid growing up in the suburbs, you know, mm -hmm. um, and just the the experience that that or the experiences that come with that. You know, what I mean, um, growing up, I'll be honest, like there was times where I dealt with the like, OK, you're, you know, you're, you're too black for the white folks, you're too white for the black folks, like that, what that line is. Um, so I would love to see some things uh, that are more in line with that. Um, yeah, that I, that I can relate to, to a bit. And that, that would be the story that I would want to kind of create. Do you have a few movies that actually sort of like, um, uh, tackle some of the subjects that you relate to the most, not just as a creative, but like, as a, you know, as an individual, as a human being. Mm. As in, um, like movies that I w I've seen or movies that I'd want to yeah. make. Uh, movies, movies that you've seen, movies that you find like, you know, are sort of like correlate with what you're, uh, what you're addressing here. I'm gonna be honest. I'm so bad with movies off the top of the head. Okay, there cool. are there are, mm -hmm. but it's like just pulling them off the top. Um, yeah, we're gonna no, be sitting here for 45 minutes with me sitting there being like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 is there a genre in particular that you that you're more drawn to, or that you not that, not not just as a creative again, but as as a fan as yeah. well? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there there's um. To be honest, I like everything. I like everything. Um, my biggest thing is as we've, you know, definitely pounded on, it's just like representation is super important to me, obviously. Um, but I like a bit of everything. Like mm -hmm. I can I can watch a Fast and Furious movie, then I can also go back and like watch Cloud Atlas. You know, like I, 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 I like a bit of range. Yeah, uh, I, wasn't a, I wasn't the biggest fan of Cloud, Atle Cloud mm -hmm. Atlas, 
I oh. see we can go back and forth on that because I've <laughs> I've watched Cloud Atlas at least five times. Oh yeah. Well we, we yeah. you know what? Maybe that's what I need to do. Maybe I need to go back. That, that, so, these are some of the movies that have like all these extra layers that you have to sort of like mm -hmm. over, over and over again. And I find that there are a lot of filmmakers that are doing like this, the Christopher Nolans, uh, you oh, know, yeah. um, there's uh, you know, the Denis Villeneuve's like all, mm -hmm. all of that, you know what I mean? So uh, it, it's it, it's very it's I find it very intriguing. Um one question that i uh, that i want to ask you too actually yeah. one thing that i find interesting in the movie industry especially when the black shift that's happening uh, in the mod in the think of you know modern black cinema is that mm -hmm. there are different stories being told and mm -hmm. like that you have a specific i you have a specific uh, desire or idea of uh, some stories that you would like to see on the big screen you know what i mean mm -hmm. but uh there's a lot of themes for example related to like you know independence black culture all that kind of stuff um mm -hmm. that um uh, that are sort of, um, I don't want to say repetitive, but mm -hmm. uh, very common. They're just told from different perspective. Yeah. Do you have a specific, for example, uh, for me, I would love to see a Mansa Musa movie. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what I mean? Uh, or story, uh, or a story of the Queen of Saba or something like that. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Stories that predate colonial uh, colonialism and all that kind of stuff. Do you yeah. have any? Uh, do you have any of these? Uh, iconic figures or, um, you know, uh, stories or legend or anything like that, that you would like to see on the big screen, even if you're not the one producing them, do you have like, a, a, do you have one off the top of your head uh, that you that you would love to see? Yeah, my, uh, my biggest one, um, and it's funny because now it's, now it's super popular, like popularized, almost borderline commercialized. But like, when I first heard about this story, um, I was like, yo, I need, to, I need to make this film. Um, and I actually started writing it and all this other stuff. Um, but it's really like the story of like Black Wall Street. Like the Black Wall Street story was like yes. the story that I was like, yo, this needs everything. This, yes. like, and even like through my, the course of doing research, like the amount of stories that are within that story, uh, the amount of people that are real, real life, you know, like real people, that yeah. lived in, the, in that uh, that Greenwood district is, um, yeah, it, it, it's wild. And like I said, now there's, you know, a lot of other production has a lot more attention, especially with the Centennial um, earlier this year. But that was a story that um, I want to say back from like 2010, I was like, yo, I'm going to make this film. I'm going to make this film. I want to see this film. And um, I might be a little too late to the punch now, but uh, yeah, that's that's that story is always near and dear to my heart. Well, I always say that, you know, it, it, it's not a matter of what story you're telling, but it's a matter of how you're exploring it, because a lot of teams are, like I said, they're repetitive and we're visiting them again. How would you tell that story? Black Wall Street, how, what angle would you, would you tackle it on? I think I would, if I were to do Black Wall Street anyway, it would be, it would be a series, it would be a short, short form series, because um, a lot of people focus just on the burning and i think that's that's actually um doing a disservice to the people that lived in the town and also the overall story of kind of what happened um the race riots and the race massacre now um as it's called it was a, a definitely the the center point but like there's, there's something to be spoken about about the amount of um professionals and how black black folks really created and thrived within this district you had doctors you had surgeons you had an entire airport, you had a busing system, you had uh, multiple schools, multiple hospitals where segregation was still present, like, like people were fending for themselves. A lot of times where you see historical pieces, you you know, we, I don't know how many slave movies we have, you know, yeah. but how many like movies you have where black people are, you know, thriving hundred, uh, even a hundred years ago. So um, I think that's an, a real important part to really hone in on in terms of like the perspective I would tell and the lens I would tell it through. And then even the other side of the uh, the massacre, where it's like, cool, the city rebuilt. Nobody really talks about how the city kind of rebuilt itself. And even after um, the massacre, it was not just that that broke the city down, but also like desegregation. Yeah. Like the fact that the, the black dollar didn't need to stay within the black community anymore because it could be spent in other communities and how that affected the black economy or the economy within that district. So. Yeah, I'd, I'd want to kind of weave through all of those those points. I have goosebumps who's just hearing you talk about it because that's something that I would love to see, not just that, but especially with the angle that you're tackling on. I 
one of the stories that I would love, I'm Haitian, you know, hence mm-hmm. the accent. I, I'm, of, I'm of Haitian descent. And um, I would love t- for someone like you, with your perspective, to take on the story of the Haitian independence. You know what I mean? But as because yeah. because these are some of the stories that are just so epic. You know, you hear about the War of the Roses. You hear about, uh, you know, the gladiators in Rome and all that kind of yeah. stuff. But there are some pretty cool aspects of the day-to-day, uh, it, it, you know, whether it's mm-hmm. like, you know, what was it like to be a doctor, uh, you know, and, you know, dropping your kid off, your kids off at school in this, in this era. Like, what were some of the stories the day-to-day some of the things that were going on those are some of the pretty cool things to explore i really like that yeah no it's 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 like i said it's it's the intricacy of all of it yeah i mean like and the fact that it's like it's not made up like these are like the one of the top surgeons the the are the not even one of the top Mm -hmm. black surgeon in the country lived in this town like he he lived there that's that's real life um but even when speaking of like the haitian revolution like that that and that is an entire story within itself as well and it's crazy that these stories are out there it's like folks aren't like telling them you know what i mean and telling them on the scale that like you said they'll tell you know how many roman movies have we had you know how many gladiator movies have we had like let's let's tell something different Mm -hmm, definitely well uh jared that that was all the questions i had for you today thank you very much for taking the time to talk to me i had a really great time uh sort of like you know picking your brain as a filmmaker as an artist again like i i think our audience is going to be very excited to sort of like hear uh, how you think and how you create and what's your process like, you know, and and what's your view of on filmmaking? Do you have any um, final thoughts, anything that you'd like to share uh, to be, again, once again, to, uh, to, to, to filmmakers, but also to, to audiences in regards to not just interacting with your movie, but uh, with your movies or, you know, your projects, but just with cinema as a whole in regards to like, what, what would Jared tell them? Oh man. Um, well, one, let me just say thank you again for having me. Thank you. Thank you for, for this conversation. This conversation has actually been really, really amazing. So I appreciate all your questions. I appreciate you making me think. Um, your detail, no, thank you. Thank you, that that honestly means a lot. Um, one thing I, I I think what I want to leave the audience or your viewers with, I keep saying audience, because I'm so used to video stuff. Yeah. Uh, I want to leave your viewers, I mean, or your uh, audience with, would be, um, man, it's, um, if you're, if you're, if you want to become a filmmaker, if you want to, um, and this kind of applies to anything, but if you want to be a filmmaker, if you want to kind of progress in your industry, it's a, it's extremely important to start. Um, it's extremely important to um, be tapped into yourself. Uh, and it's extremely important to just um, be, be, be fearless. And fearless doesn't, doesn't, it's not an on and off switch. That's something that's developed over time, but it has like you you have to get to that point you have to get to the point where you don't like i said you can't fear failure fail like failure is just an opportunity for learning and if you look at it like that then no nobody can ever say you failed anything so yeah just start just start just start fantastic it was a pleasure talking with you shifters you heard it you heard it for, you heard it here first uh very exciting conversation with jared mcgriff um and um if again if people want to get in touch with you i uh, will make sure to leave uh, your, your contact information if you are all that kind of stuff uh somewhere so that they can sort of like keep track of what you're doing next and uh you know keep up with uh, with your good work so once again thank you very much for taking the time and until next time take care awesome thank you man take care Shift though.